And I think actually civil society in its broad sense, including academia, has been so important. And that's why I'm delighted to introduce our next speaker, uh, Carmela Troncoso from MEFPL, to take the floor, uh, who will also give us a lightning speak and then follow by one question. Thank you Go so ahead. much. That we need a balance, a balance between protection of the children and the protection of human rights. And a balance is start by knowing the benefits and harms. But so far, we have been framing a lot of this debate, indeed, between either we protect the children or we protect human rights. And that kind of hides a very fundamental question, which is, does this regulation actually protect the children? Because if it doesn't, then this discussion is moot. Right? So this is a lot of the things that Mirdiv has been saying now. Does it protect? Do we have this technology? And the, reason, and, and, and the answer is actually we do not. Right? We do not have any technology at this point in time that actually can do this job. On the one hand, as Meredith was saying, there are a lot of errors. Okay? We can only build technology that either gives a lot of false negatives, that means that a lot of system is not detected, therefore not actually useful, or a technology that can have a lot of false positives, that means that a lot of material that is not CSAM would be flagged. Now when we have this, we actually need human power to go and shift through these uh, two different um, things. But despite the many times that we have been asking, how is that manpower going to be built? Who is going to be there? We still have no answer. Are we really going to be able to see through all of these images to distinguish, or are we start accusing a lot of people of false crimes with the chilling effect that this has? Because this is not going to be kind of like be accusing of stealing something in a shop. It's being accused of child abuse, right? So first of all, we don't have a technology that does that. But this is not the main problem. The main problem is that even if, even if in tec this technology would not have as many errors, what we do know is that this technology is extremely easy to evade. What that means is that it's very easy to do a small modifications to any material to fool the detector. We can make the detector think that some CSAM is not CSAM, and we can also make the detector think that something that is not CSAM is CSAM. So essentially, anybody interested in actually distributing this kind of material is never going to be stopped by the detector, while the scanning is going to affect us all. So what we have here is that we have a proposal that wants to do something and to stop using a technology that does not exist, and that, as scientists, the evidence shows that it's likely to never exist. We cannot fix these errors, and we cannot fix these errors because for some of these images or tones, like it is very hard even from humans sometimes to know exactly what the context is. But as um, Meredith was saying, AI or the other technologies that we have to do this detection also don't know context. They don't know how to read this thing. It is impossible to make them work in the way that we are kind of post belief that is actually going to happen. So this technology uh, does not exist and this regulation therefore, does not have any warranty of bringing any of the benefits. Now, in the question of balance, the other question is, can we protect human rights? And then the first thing, when we are here in the uh, debate of encryption, is that all of the properties. And this, from a technical perspective, again, is really shocking, because it seems that they have not really understood what the definition of confidentiality is in encryption. And to try to... Uh, human terms and not computer scientists, what it means is that if you see an encrypted message, just by looking at it, you should not be able to distinguish whether it is a message and what the content is or whether the message is something random, right? You give you two things and you don't know. Now, if you have this scanning technology and you can see the message before, if I show you the encryption, you can know what is inside because you have seen it. Therefore, you have completely broken with the term of confidentiality, exactly the same thing that if we would have someone in our homes, in our living rooms, reading any letter that we write on paper before we put it in the envelope, the confidentiality of the envelope is broken because the letter will have already been read. So it is really shocking from, from the technical security perspective that this notion is even kind of taught in the room. The second thing that we don't have a technical, uh, a technical solution for and it's again a question that uh, the proponents have avoided once and again, even though we have asked it many times, is how are they going to prevent abuse? Meredith now gave a couple of examples of things that have been already happening. It's not only the EU, right? In the US, we already have indeed terrorists, uh, terrorist kind of attacks coming into this, drug, um, drug 
operation detection coming into the idea that, yeah, why the world don't get scanned for those things. And the thing is that technology cannot by itself decide, well, I'm only going to work on CSAM, right? This is not possible. We don't know how to do it. For technology, they just have bits, and maybe they look similar to other bits, or maybe they don't. But what the context, what the, 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 the meaning of these bits are, is not something that technology can distinguish. So we can only rely on policy to do this. But so far, despite all of the questions we have about how we're going to sure, be sure that the slippery slope does not happen, there has been no answer from any uh, proponent that actually even addressed this question. So at the end of the day, on this balance, we have that a technology that does not work and a technology that cannot protect human rights. So from a technical perspective, this proposal is essentially a disaster that can never be done. So we need to protect the children. And we should not be discussing whether the protection of the children is something that we should do or not. We should be discussing whether this proposal is the way to do it. And it turns out that it's not. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that really, uh, actually, very clear uh, dis uh, explanation of what is a very complex topic. And now, Carmela, I know that you're obviously active in the more in the academic community more broadly, and indeed you've worked with our organisation, CDT and Edry. Uh, what what are computer scientists making of, of, of this topic? What are the discussions in your community? Is it disbelief? Is it lack of science? Is there any you know? Is there disagreement in the in the community? I think, uh, I mean, many times we have some conflicts, right? Because some people actually think that some problems can be solved and some ones do not. And then we have, in this case, there is just this belief. As I just said, right, these claims that are wild, it's just like, how can it even work? And it is in that sense that it took a bit of a while for the academic community to stand up. Because in the beginning, we were like, I mean, this is a nonsense, right? Like, we don't even need to stand up. We have work to do. We cannot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but actually, um, at this point in time, and that uh, like the, the open letter that we wrote, that by now is signed up by 500 uh, academics all around the world, and I still keep receiving uh, requests to actually sign this letter, shows that the position is unanimous. Like there is no one, there is no one in the academic community, there is no one, none of the experts on security and privacy in the world that believe for a moment that this is a good idea and that we can build such a system in a safe way. That's a very powerful note to end. Our lightning talks on. Thank you so much for that. Really, very thank, thank you so much for being with us.